the song cycle that we're doing on Love Joys, Life Sorrows is Ich und Du, which is your leader set. Is that the only leader set you have? Or? No. Well, since I've had this um, this residency since um, with Leader Alive, kind of their their whole reason for being is to sort of um, uh, to to bring to life the leader tradition and the, and give performances. And so, in my capacity as composer in residence, what they wanted to do was bring someone in who could create works, new works in German, sort of augment the leader um, the leader repertoire. And, and I'll say for, first and foremost, going into this, like German was not my strongest language. <laughs> so from that respect, I, I probably was not a good fit. They, I'm glad that they you know, didn't know that. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's a really unique challenge, I have to say. Mm -hmm. This idea of taking these pre-existing texts that in many cases have been set to music, you know, not only, you know, uh, hundreds of times, but just some, some real masterpieces. And then to try and create sort of, oh, I wonder from a 21st century perspective, how can I add to this? Or how can I sort of shine a slightly different light to it? So, you know, as a composer, I like a challenge. I like sort of puzzle, the puzzle aspect of it. Um, so that's been, that's been really unique. Nice. Okay. And this is what, 20, I can't remember, what year was that for Ich und Du? Oh, so this this was actually um, this was the first piece that I actually wrote as part of the residency. So this was sort of like my inaugural, and I and as I, I grab this here, it says twenty fifteen. This is okay. This is product placement now. But, <laughs> <laughs> Go get your copy now, people. <laughs> I think I actually wrote it in twenty fourteen, but so okay. it's like right in, right in the beginning, and you know these these three songs in here. Um, using text, including the, um, the the Monnock text, which you know the Schumann setting is just yeah. so beautiful. And I have to say that, like trying to to create a new piece using something that's been already set so be beautiful, beautifully, was incredibly intimidating, incredibly challenging. I'm I'm surprised I actually did it because it was. <laughs> I mean, there's so many as a composer, you see things or you hear things, and you say. Oh, I can't possibly do something. Right? That's that's been right. done. Yeah. But for whatever like crazy reason, I decided to to set it. Um, and then the other two settings are slightly less well known. Um, so that you know, it's kind of a good balance there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you did you write it specifically for Heidi? Was she the yeah, one? I did. I did actually. Yeah. So it's she's one of the. It's kind of a core group of say six or seven singers, and then you know mm -hmm. bring additional people in. And so it was a set that I wrote for her. We even like picked out the the poetry oh. together. We went up to it was like a Mendocino weekend. It was like you know as romantic as it possibly <laughs> could be. <you> know? <laughs> Glass of wine, looking at the ocean. Yes, reading German romantic poetry. It sounds like heaven. <laughs> it really does, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it was. And as you'd expect, right, they're all about love. So Yeah, you know. of course, of course, of course. Um, so, and how, um, they, so they've been out for about five, six years. And how have they been received? How are, you know, I mean, obviously I heard them somewhere, but... <laughs> Well, re yeah, really well. Um, I think, you know, the challenge, uh, you know, a lot of times you'll hear a great song, you know, for, like whatever era by whatever composer. And she said, okay, this is great, but how do I program this? And so one of the ideas was if you if we have these pieces um, that are, you know, that use pre-existing text, it's, it's really easy to pair them, mm -hmm. you know? So a lot of times, Either Heidi and I or other singers, for example, the we'll pair the Monnock setting with the Schumann set, Schumann yeah. setting, right? And so that it's a nice way to sort of like put them side by side. Right. And because the pieces are about about love, and they're sort of the most sort of self consciously kind of beautiful pieces. Um, they're relatively easy to put together. Although I should ask you because you're going to be singing them, but um, <laughs> and and yeah, they've um, they. They're pieces that I'm proud of and that singers, you know, really gravitate towards. Yeah, well, they're, they're lovely. And of course I knew the 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 first text, the Dein Blaues Auge because of the, the Brahms setting. Um, and it does have some resonances, obviously, and but also it's its own thing, which is glorious. And 
uh, I love the the repetition of the E. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was a different touch. Was there a thing that you were going for there? Was that just the compositional motive or? Um, a little bit of both. Um, hold on, I'm, I'm looking at the, the text because it's been uh -huh. a while to look at this. I think this was sort of the, I mean, the idea of this, these, the blazing pair of, of blue eyes that hold. Yeah. And so I wanted something that was really sort of direct and shiny and kind of obsessive as the yes. poet is obsessed right. sort of with these, with these eyes. Both and so it's sort yeah. of like clarion higher. Um, and I, that seemed like a good kind of musical, um, you know, metaphor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're just, they're lovely. And of course, you know, your suggestions along the way, uh, especially in the uh, Ich und Du, the soaring lines in that just get me every time. Um, and the play with the two against the three and yeah. the two against the triple, it's just, I think what we ended up doing is just, we got to take the whole thing in two. Even the four uh, sections kind of have to be in two or else it doesn't, yeah. for us at least, you know, it would have fallen apart. Yeah, I know. I completely agree. Completely agree. Yeah, and then you know when we get to the the rapture session at the end, when you said, "Okay, now now play it out of sync," we were like, "Okay," <laughs> but you know, it's. I think hopefully you will also think that it it was it worked. It's really lovely. Um, oh, good. The illness that you allow for in these pieces. Well, you know that's something that I think. Okay, so before my sort of composer life, you know, spending you know years upon years as a pianist, and and it's the same for a singer. What are we taught? We're taught, here's the score. It's absolutely sacred. You got to do exactly what it says. Deviate and interpret, but not too much, right? And so there's this sort of idea. But when you're a composer, it's the opposite. You, I mean, our whole job description is we're supposed to come up with new things, right? And so what I found then as I would perform my own pieces, I suddenly had this sort of blank check. Well, well I can change it. It's my piece, right? You know, it's like no one's going to tell Beethoven he played a wrong note, yeah. right? <laughs> And so I, I, what I find myself doing is I take sort of a, a jazz musician-like approach that like, okay, this is it. This is just a map. It's not the territory. And, you know, if I want to like repeat a measure here or there, if I want to like, you know, get a little bit more into it or get a little quieter, or repeat, like I, I'm the composer, I can do that. And I sort of expect, you know, when possible, I try to create an opportunity for singers and, and other performers to do the same because I think it's healthier, you know, you're to rather than think, oh my God, I hope I don't mess up, you know, which is sort of like focusing on the negative. It's just, oh, what can I do? How can I shape and create this? And if I need to spend a little more time, yeah, I'm going to go for it. If I want to repeat this a little bit, yep, I can do that too. And so that's kind of what we were, we were talking about, nice. you know, giving yeah. you the permission to make music. Yeah. 